right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be looking at a format that is very near and dear to my heart. It's uh, Dual Commander, a format that has been played for ages in paper, but only recently got adopted into Magic Online, and that is obviously incredibly awesome. Um, this video is going to be relevant because this Saturday, it's going to be the MTGO Creator Showdown, and Dual Commander is going to be the format of choice on uh, Thursday, I have an article coming out on mtgo.com where I'm talking about the format, a little bit of introduction, some sample deck lists. You should definitely go check that out if you want to look into the format. I think it's quite awesome both to play and to spectate. So I also hope to see a lot of you guys in the chat come Saturday um, where I'll be doing the coverage with Will Hall. Um, yeah, looking forward to that one as well. So a lot of Dual Commander going on this week for, yeah, at least for me. So. What I've chosen today is to bring a sweet, sweet mid-range deck built around Slimefoot and Squee. So first of all, we all know when this is Junt colored, um, we can only play Junt colors in our main deck, so that's fine, right? So three mana, three, three. When it enters or attacks, we know that from the, you know, primeval titans of the world, stuff like that, create a 1-1 one -one Sapperling creature token. So when you play, it's four power for three mana. That's solid, right? But there's more. So for four mana, we can sacrifice a Saproling. So very important. We need that token to stick around in order to take advantage of this ability. We can return Slimefoot and Squee and up to one other target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This means that when this card dies and or gets countered, I can choose to let it go to the graveyard. Then I can reanimate it later. It is a tiny bit iffy if your one one you know dies. Let's say. I attack, my opponent trades it off, then before I go to my second main phase, my opponent kills off the 1-1, one -one, or both my 1-1s one -ones in that case. So there's something to look out for, so you don't get trapped with your slime foot and squee in the, in the graveyard. If that was to happen, we have multiple ways to bring it back, but it's still something to think about. So, this is a mid-range deck as at, at its core. I'm playing all the available acceleration, all of the green stuff here is for acceleration. Ideally, we go turn 1 accelerant, turn 2 squee. We have, obviously, you know, the best mana base uh, available. We play all fetches except from, let me see, Flooded Strand, I guess. Um, we play all the duels. We play the best, you know, supplementary duels. And then the deck is basically just removal, efficient creatures, and stuff that wins the game. And I'm talking about stuff like, let's say, Undermount Adventure, Minsk and Boo. Those cards will put away the opponent. Baragoyf is a big one. Um, and then this deck plays a couple of engines between Birthing Pod, uh, Recurring Nightmare, and I think also Chthonian, yes, Chthonian Nightmare, which is basically just to make sure that we win the game if it comes to some kind of slugfest. Um, so we can both be fast, we can be slow, we can grind with the best of them, we can put control decks to bed early. So this deck is the classic definition of mid-range. We do have a little bit of a uh, cool package here with Green Sun Zenith. We have everything from Dryad Arbor and up the curve. We have some stuff. Um, we have the Curator, which is Graveyard Hate, Canker Bloom, which is like a Disenchant effect. Um, and yeah, basically we're just looking to play solid cards up the curve, and hopefully our card quality will take over just like it did for Reed Duke back in 2014. So yeah, I mean, let's play some games of Dual Commander. All right, guys, quick message here. If you want to have access to my deck guides, my strategy articles, whether you want to pitch me a sweet deck to play on the channel, um, whether you want to look into coaching or simply just want to say thank you for the content I put out, please check out my Patreon below and become a Baron today. Now, let's get back to the games. Okay, time for round one. I'm playing Dual Commander. I'm playing Junt, mid-range, and I'm playing against Hidetsuku and Kairi. Let's see. 5-mana Demir, 5-4 uh, flying. When it enters, draw 3, put 2 back. Okay, so Brainstorm ETB, pretty cool. When it dies, exile the top card of your library, and then you can... Dome your opponent. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So I would expect some Demure control deck and with some, you know, miracle synergies. So you can get some mileage out of this trigger. Both of the triggers, actually. Um, yeah, let's look at our hand here. This is Dryad Arbor. I should have picked a different version. My bad. So six lands in the Thought Sea is going to be a mulligan. Have fun. And press the mulligan button. Okay. So let's see if we can do better here. Yeah, this is a lot better. Uh, have turn two Slime Foot. If my opponent counters it, I can let it go to the graveyard, and then I can unearth it, which is pretty cool. Um, so I guess I get rid of a Mortuary here. Keep, get rid of Mortuary, because I go turn one, turn two. I want the Clamp to grind. I want the Troll to get back. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. 
So the land cyclists here from Lord of the Rings are very, very potent with, with Slimefoot and Squee. Um, once it's in the graveyard, I can kind of go, you know, have, having cycled one of these and then bring one of these guys back and the Squee back. It's pretty nice. Also, I want to find Squee here. Oh, Squee, oh, Squee's there to the left, and Slimefoot is that guy. Okay, that's cool. I love these collab cards. I think they're quite awesome. Snow-covered Swamp does not change a whole lot. Let's just put um, Wild Growth onto the Bayou. Worth noting is Wasteland is not legal in the format, so I don't. there's not any risk here aside from getting, you know, boomeranged or something, which, you know, could be. Um... This is cool because then I can go get Tega with um, Misty Rainforest, and then I have John Colors turn two without any, you know, without any trouble. There is, in theory, my opponent could be playing something like Harbinger of the Seas, but I don't think I'm in a position to worry too much about that. I draw Badlands. Hmm. It's very, very likely that I get countered here, but I th think that is just what happens some sometimes. Oh, I made some mistake here. I don't want to join any chat sessions. So here comes Slimefoot. It gets countered. Putting it into the graveyard is a bit risky. Let's see, next... Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll do that next time. So now I'm going to let it go to the command zone. But mainly because I have the, the lands I need to, to cast it for 5 mana, which is the, you know, plus 2 tax included. Um, and then I can unearth it from, you know, if it gets countered a second time. I think that's reasonable. Hmm. Land is a terrible draw here. Um, uh, unclear what I'm supposed to do. I think I'm gonna go, um, Skull Clamp. Then I'm gonna go Cycle for a, um, Mortuary, and then... I'll go for the good old main phase Surveil Land. Not ideal. But not nothing either. So we get rid of that one. So it's kind of like drawing a card. I also have some upside here. If I mill a good three drop, I could unearth it into play and, you know, have a decent turn, everything considered. But yeah, definitely nothing special. Um, also, note how play draw was huge this game. If I'm able to resolve that slime foot turn two under my opponent's counter spell, we're having a way different game where. My cards could take over, but now it looks like the first play onto the battlefield is going to be my opponent's commander, which is really not ideal. Also worth noting, Fatal Push does not kill the 5-drop commander. Okay, so I try again with Slimefoot and Squee, and this time I'm going to put it into the graveyard if it gets countered. My opponent miracles a temporal mastery. Okay, so yeah, my opponent has some miracle deck. That's kind of cool. I love the all of the room you have for for building in this format. Plus thirty years to choose from of cards. That's super awesome. So obviously this guy was like, so you can be. Oh, I want to build like some miracle deck. Which commander is best with miracle cards? Or I want to play blue black. Which commander in those colors is the best? Or like, there's so many ways you can attack this format, and it's it's really cool. Okay, so now we're probably just getting crushed, but this is I mean this is just awesome because sick things are gonna happen. Time stretch, take two additional turns. I love everything about this. So now the opponent can spend one of those turns developing the commander. So worth noting is Dream Halls will. Now, if, you, if my opponent discards a black card or a blue card like they did, they can go zero mana commander. But if it dies, then you actually need to pay two mana next time. So it's not all fun and dandy, but it is pretty darn awesome. And now my opponent has five mana to work with. This game is very over, but I'm just going to get a little bit more information before I pack it in. And I guess showcasing some cool things as well. So now my opponent can search for an instant or a card with flash. My opponent goes brain search. My opponent could just take the turn here, untap the mana. They have one more turn in the bank. They realize, obviously. Here comes brain search, paid four with mana. I think if this fatal push was something that could kill the commander, there would be some kind of chance, but. I think my opponent just has too many cards here, and the Dream Holes is also incredibly annoying. So the thing about a deck like, like mine is pretty similar to, you know, 
whatever logic was used back in the day for, for modern junt is if your opponent, if you're not able to, you know, trade one for one and or and or put pressure on the opponent, the opponent can outdo you in the in the longer games. Um and I will say it, it's also just true that we we can we're kind of in the middle. Let's see what this is. Time or money. Starting with you, each player votes for time or money. For each time vote, take an ad additional my opponent voted time. For each money vote. Okay, so my opponent's taking a turn here and taking my, my commander. I I've seen enough. I've seen enough. That's uh not necessarily what I want to face. I want to face, you know, some creatures, some a little bit more low to the ground. So I'm just going to assume that there's some fail rate to the opponent's deck with having too many big cards. But I guess playing against the non-blue is very nice for my opponent because when I can't counter the commander, it's guaranteed to resolve, right? All right, so now I go first. This hand is not very good. It's five lands with a Dryad Arbor and a dead snuff out. So let's press the mulligan button once more. And this is way better. Now I can go turn one Goose. Turn two Slimefoot or Bronco. Pretty nice option to have. So let's see here. The basic forest, I don't think that holds too much value, but maybe it's the same with... Uh, opponent with the analysis here. Pretty cool. Um, it doesn't seem that great to have the Prismatic Vista either, so I'm trying to think. If I go turn one forest, then I can just fetch for some dual lands. Maybe that's fine. So, turn one, Gilded Goose. Turn two, Squee or Bronco. I, I think I'm going to go Squee turn two, because... It's using my mana better, and I'm not even sure if drawing extra cards versus getting my opponent dead faster. Like, what's the best? I don't. I'm not even sure. But yeah, decks that go big, it's kind of a problem, I think, for this deck. It's kind of like playing against, you know, Tron back in the day with Junt, or you know, Amulet Titan, or something along those lines. It's cool. Also, the, the more, you know, fringe a format gets, the more you're likely to have, uh, let's say, a friendly chat with your opponent, which is something I, I enjoy quite a bit. So with that being said, I feel like I can... Maybe if I use this to go get Badlands, then I can find some kind of surveil here later. I think that's reasonable. Uh, here is Badlands, Sacrifice to make black, cast Slimefoot and Squee, it resolves, And uh, my opponent has seen my name before. That, al that also comes up more than... More than uh, it used to. That's kind of cool. So now I have to check my deck here. Eldritch Evolution. Eldritch Evolution. What kind of big boys am I working with? Fury, Chaos Defiler. Okay, so I can go get the initiative. I can go get a Grief. I don't hate either of those. Which three drops can I go get? Something like Broadside Bombardier can finish the opponent quite, quite quickly. Um, is that good? Is that good? Let's see. If I go Sacrifice the Goose, because it doesn't really do much, and I go Broadside Bombardier, attack for a bunch, do I then want to sacrifice Slimefoot to deal five more? I mean, it's possible. Let's see. I need green out of this one. Good thing I checked the backside of this pathway. So 
So I'm gonna go, what, here, Taiga, sacrifice the goose, go for Broadside Bombardier. The reason why I want Broadside Bombardier is... It seems to kill my opponent so quickly. Taiga... What else can I do? I can go get a 5-drop, but I really don't think that's that useful. Eldredge, Sacrifice... So... Ooh, that's very strong. So get pierced. Okay, so in the older versions, I know there's a Magus of the Moon because that card just sometimes wins the game against some decks. Um, and I guess my opponent was scared of that card here. They should be, right? Okay, so here's Demonic Tutor. Demonic Tutor, so before my opponent plays a land, is less scary. Let me put it that way. Um. There is a chance my opponent is simply just going to, you know, make their land drop here. But I also have to respect the sweeper, so I think the cool thing... Hmm. Or my opponent had a tap land and they were great at, you know, concealing their strength here. Either way, good play. I think the Flash on Endurance here is going to come in handy. I don't really want to develop the Bronco and then get, you know, damnationed or whatever. Um, so, I like my situation here. I can end step Endurance and Fetch a Surveil. I think that's reasonable. Let's see if I get damnationed here. That would be the most expected outcome, I'll say. Looks like my opponent... Is this Toxic Deluge? Could be good old Toxic Deluge. Toxic for three. All right, so that works. Toxic, I'll return the squee to the command zone. I'll end step the endurance, fetch surveil, and try and be, you know, straight back. Straight back in it. I actually don't know how much graveyard hate, uh, gra graveyard shenanigans is in that deck, so I'm just gonna shuffle my opponent's graveyard. Then I'm going to go for the Mortuary. And let's see if we can draw something that's better than redeveloping um, Slimefoot and Squee. I don't think so, but let's see. Get rid of the Decay. Doesn't seem that great. Thoughtseize. So now I can go Thoughtseize plus Bronco, or I can go Squee. I'm still going to go Squee, I feel like. Still going to go Squee. So I have, let's see, I've already three... How much black do I have in play? Two, so I'm going to third black. I guess that's fine. Now, let's see if we can dodge a one-mana counter. There are stuff like Force Spike, stuff like... Uh, what's that card's name? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. The, it's like a one-mana that counters something that you played from another place than the hand. So... Now, I'm putting my opponent in a, in a tough spot because I attack my opponent at 5. If they want to Misty, they're down to 4. And then if they play their commander, I'm insured to get 4 damage in after 1 block. So, pretty good life total for me here. My opponent needs some more stabilizing stuff like sweepers. Not many time walks legal in the format. Uh, temporal mastery into some good play would do it. But now my opponent is really under pressure, so let's see if they can come up with another sweeper. Uh, okay, so it looks like my opponent has to be more than just lucky on the on the Jace here. It's kind of the same thing as a blocker. So my opponent needs a one mana spot removal and bouncing endurance. Okay, so. That one goes back to hand, and then if my opponent has a removal spell, they can survive, so... Oh, wow, nice draw. So, what I want to do now is... Hmm. So, my opponent's playing well here. I think it's going to be very strong for me to attack first. Because it, kinda, it forces my opponent to react, and then I have, you know... I can kind of do whatever I want. I'm attacking my opponent here. Um, because if my opponent has a removal for endurance, I actually can't think about what which one that would be. But if they do, they go to three. 
And then I can go slime put and squee and bombardment, and then I have three creatures to finish off my opponent. So I think my opponent needs something like force and negation to stay in this game. Maybe force of will will do it. All right, cut down on that card is understandable. So now I can thought seize my opponent first and play around that stuff. So let's thought seize. And Goblin Bombardment are away to the next game. Enter the Infinite, that's so funny. Goblin Bombardment. Stack Endurance, finish the job. All right, game three is up. Pretty cool game. Um, Kind of showcased how, how uh, you know, being on the play versus being on the draw, because those two games were, I think even this game, if I if I get toxic to turn before, my opponent has more life total to work with, and the Jace is there, I have to worry about that, and then we get into a longer game. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's no sideboard. This is so funny, because I'm so used to thinking about what's a sideboard in those spots, but I guess that's not relevant for, for Dual Commander. All right, this hand looks fine. Can kind of run fast. I'm hoping the Spirit Guide will, you know, counter a Force Spike or something along those lines. My opponent with a turn one play. That could be a discard spell. I don't like that. Cantrip. Okay, hard evidence is acceptable. Okay, so draw basically another copy of Fury. Not really ideal. Uh, Command Tower, Ignoble Hierarch. Worth noting is Command Tower is going to be in every deck. I guess there's no need for it in a monocolored deck. Um, Ignoble Hierarch is kind of tough to play in your deck because you need to be exactly the Junt colors because the color identity, ent identity rule of the format. So it's like whenever there's a, a mana symbol in the text box, y your commander needs to be those colors. So that means I cannot play Noble Hierarch. It means I cannot play, you know, Avacyn's Pilgrim. Yeah, just a little bit of cool stuff. So now I'm hoping it's Force Spike. And not the, the card I talked about before. I can't remember the name of it. Cast Away? Wipe Away? No. I don't know. It's in one of my other decks. I'll check it out here. So let's see. Uh, it's, yeah, Wash Away. Okay, so basically, like, counter your opponent's commander or counter something that was played from Exile, and then it's also a cancel. So pretty pretty sweet card. Mm. Lanor Elf is not a good draw. You want your mana to work turn one. When you draw them later, you kind of need some stuff like, you know, Bombardment, Skull Clamp, Birthing Pod for it to be viable. Um, so let's just go Forest and try and cast the Slimefoot. Let's get Force Spiked. It's always funny that I'm, I'm hoping to get Force Spiked. My opponent unfortunately had the wash away, that's, that's a lot to do. Like, when you're on the draw in this format, drawing the one-mana counters, like Mental Misstep, or zero-mana counters, I guess, wash away, force a will, that's just so huge in the format. I, I, I can't stress that enough how good that is. Ooh, Vorexion Tower with the Crab, that's sick. That's super, super sick. So now I might have to kill the Crab off, which is... Not my favorite uh, activity in the world. So now I have to ask myself, is Hardcast Fury better? Or do I prefer simply getting the slime food going? Maybe getting the slime food going is, is what I want to do. Let's see. So maybe I go fetch... I guess Swamp is fine here. Go for Swamp. Let's see what's going on here. Slime food. And then I think because of Spell Pierce, I'm going to Fury and not Pyrokinesis. I think that's correct. Let's see. It's pretty annoying I have to Fury here to negate my opponent that mana, but I think it's fine. All right, so getting rid of my opponent's mana acceleration here while developing my commander is not bad. 
I could have used the logic that I, I let my opponent play out the commander and then I kill it. Wait, was that better? Very possibly better because my next turn is not that good. But I'm also kind of smelling blood in the water when it comes to my opponent's land drop. I don't think there was a reason for my opponent to play this tower out and show me. But maybe they just drew the land. Who knows? My opponent's had four mana. I don't like this. This is damnation. So slime foot to the command zone. And now it's going to be a seven drop, which is not perfect. Recurring nightmare is a good one. So I think what I want to do now is go my two creatures, not show my opponent the recurring nightmare. Also, funnily enough, that I went for fury while I was thinking about what could my opponent have with the spell pierce. I should also have thought about my deck is also like part time reanimator deck, so pretty good reason to have fury in your graveyard and pretty good reason to have random creatures lying around. So now I'm hoping my opponent goes, Ooh, they missed the land drop. Oh, huh, okay. Well, so I guess my read was correct a couple of turns ago. My opponent just randomly drew the delta, or not random, randomly, you know what I mean. They, they drew the delta without having another land. I guess that read was correct. Um, I really don't want to jam the Nightmare into counter magic and making the decision easy for my opponent later. You know, tapping out. I want to punish my opponent for tapping out while I'm kind of turning up the heat on him here. So hopefully this Tarmogoyf doesn't just get, you know, fatal pushed or whatever. If that Tarmogoyf is a a an actual threat that's going to stay in play, I really like my chances, because that deck does play a lot of, you know, um, funky cards. I'm going to play the Death Rite. I, I don't know if it's correct or not, but I believe my opponent already had... Okay, we're getting Stern Scolded, that's totally fine. I believe if my opponent had a Sweeper like Toxic, they would have cast it already, so that's why I'm feeling pretty good about playing that Death Rite out. Okay, so... That is way worse than a land for my opponent, but they do get to play their 5-drop commander next turn. I guess I should have it here. My opponent goes for an untapped land, which says a lot. So they could have gone sewers here, but this tells me they have a 4-drop interactive spell, and that could be something like Cryptic Command, and that would also explain the pause they made last turn. So I'm just going to keep attacking for 5 here. Um... I think I like playing out the land... Yeah, let's play at the land, it's fine. In, in general, I want my opponent to underestimate my hand. Also, really nice here if it, if it actually is Cryptic Command and I'm, um, and I'm actually stalling my opponent here. Now, I don't, like, I don't like the look of this. My opponent is fetching here, so that means they, they want six mana this turn. Um, that is definitely not good if they have something better than this card. Oh, okay, it's just that card. Okay, so I guess my opponent wants to keep up blue and black, and this one wouldn't do that because, uh, hmm, I don't know. I don't know about that fetch. Let's see. So now, oh, okay, okay, easy now, buddy. So let's see what this is. I think that's like an edict, and they gain life. No, maybe they don't get life. Uh, okay, so now I sacrifice my biggest creature. My opponent does what? They hit a, Jesus. Did we know about this, or was this just, you know, a nice situation? Uh, well, this sucks. Can I, can, I, can I give my opponent two more turns here? Starting with you, each player votes for time or money. For each time, for each time vote, take an extra turn. My opponent wanted an extra turn. For each money vote, wow. Can I win if I give my opponent a Tarmogoyf and a, and a Time Walk? Unfortunately, this resolves for the Flare, because, wow, okay, <laughs> that, that's super sick. That's the dream. That's just a dream to, to hit your 9-drop here. Dome me for 9. Get a Time Walk, and, and <laughs> that's sick. Okay, opponent is living the dream here. And now my opponent has seven mana to recast the commander. That's sick. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. 
when awesome things happen, sometimes it's for you and sometimes it's for the opponent. That's just what we have to live with these days. So now Dream Halls into that card makes makes it so that my opponent can pay, as I talked about earlier, two mana because it's taxed once. Two mana to play the commander, discarding a an irrelevant spell snare. And I really don't think I can do anything this game. I need to draw. My opponent needs to have kind of bad draws. And I need to draw a cheap creature so I can nightmare back the fury. But I just feel like I'm getting miracled anyway. So here's reanimate. Reanimate is a cheap creature. So I guess I go. Animate Llanowar Elves, and then I try with Recurring Nightmare. I lose to Removal, I lose to Counters. Pretty cool game. Pretty cool match. A little bit of high rolling going, going on in the end here. Recurring Nightmare, killing off the Flyer. Fury can theoretically trade with Tarmogoyf, and we can draw another... Oh, I forgot about that one. Okay, okay. So, time stretch. GG's, great match, fun deck. Definitely so. Let's uh, see if we can win the next one. All right, round two here. I'm playing Jund, and I think this hand is fine. If I was on the draw, I was a bit skeptic. Well, maybe not. I guess the Fatal Push is just what um, makes this viable. I'm playing against Ty Joaquin, perfect shot. So I love that perfect shot, because look at this. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to a creature, equal to that creature's toughness, draw a card. So this is basically, you want the perfect shot, you don't want to overdo it. This is very cool lore. So, and then it has an activated ability of X-Tap. If a source you control will deal none combat damage to a permanent or a player this turn, it deals that much damage, plus X. So you can kind of adjust and, and then get the perfect shot. And then the flavor text goes, you would best keep yourself out of my sight, which is not something I'm gonna, you know, uh, live by i'm actually gonna gonna give it a give it a crack here but very very cool card i played against this deck the other day and my opponent had an awesome uh pyrokinesis that ended up killing um no i'm mixing up with an is it commander actually but i've played against this deck before and it's kind of cool you can you can add you know the mana and uh and then then make for the perfect shot i, I was mixing it up with an is it commander i don't i can't remember the name but that was also a cool one with that rewarded you for dealing exactly one damage. Um, so let's see. I have a bunch of green here. So maybe I just go for Badlands. And then I go Tarmogoyf. That's probably going to be fine. I will say whenever my opponent's on a two-color deck, I'm always, eh, should I play around Blood Moon? But I oftentimes end up not doing it. Bowmaster is a cool draw. question is if Bowmasters is better... There's an argument that passing the turn here is solid because I expect my opponent to play the commander and I would rather push that end of turn and get going with Slimefoot than simply have a Tarmogoyf in play. Unclear if that is optimal or not. Also, my opponent must be wondering now, hmm, land go. Let's see. I hope... I get to fire off my push here. Okay, well, I get to Bowmaster a small creature, which is also awesome. Um, I will say I'm a bit scared about that white mana, so you already guessed it. I'm scared of one of my own favorite cards. Scared of the dreaded mana tithe that my opponent did not have, which is awesome for me because this is a huge swing in the game. Opponent decides to get a little bit of a surveil trigger here. But that also means that my slime foot is now resolving, and my opponent's kind of on the back foot here. So very, very good start to the game. Utopia Sprawl. So I think I can free roll out Utopia Sprawl this turn. Especially if I go like this, and I tap, yes, like that. Maybe that's bad logic. Maybe I want to do like this and then say black. Is that it? Black, green, red, sure. So here comes Slimefoot and Squee. Attack for one. And all of a sudden, I have a dominating board presence. 
I have a fatal push from my opponent's two mana commander, and my Goyf is only growing. I mean, don't even get me started on Minsk and Boo, so pretty ideal start to this game. Not gonna lie. Also, if my opponent kills the slime foot, I can bring back the Oliphant. They don't kill the slime foot. I keep making more tokens. Bunch of situation here. Bunch of bad situations for my opponent here. Here's Magda. I believe this is making some treasures whenever you commit a crime. I'm not too worried about that, to be honest. Um, mm, so let's see. Can I do anything smart? Or should I just attack for a million here? Um, red, red. Yeah, let's make some more red, I guess. Like this, like this, and holding up Fatal Push. I don't see how my opponent comes back into this game, but that's why we play Magic. I want to see, I want to see how they come back into the game. Throw that guy. So now my opponent needs something, like... I mean, I guess Pyrokinesis is a card that could make this make this game um, complicated. Not this time, though. Mm, so I think what I do here is just I stay back with the 1-1s and attack for 7. Create one more token, even. Yeah, this is so good. Um, the other consideration is killing this to get in for the most amount of damage. Maybe that's actually just what I'm going to do. Fatal push, attack for a million. Okay, so more or less the nut draw here, getting the job done game one against Boros. What about this hand then? I like I like the look of it. Like whenever I see, you know, a couple of lands and acceleration, I like what's going on. And also it proves that Bowmasters and Chain Lightning are just all around solid cards against against a, a you know small creature strategy. So this hand is pretty awesome. Worth noting is Wild Growth can go and enchant any land where Utopia Sprawl can only enchant forests. That makes, you know, the fast lands like Copperline Gorge, etc. way better. Here's Mother of Runes. Okay, so that is a card that I have to kill turn one with Chain Lightning. That's just how that card works. Goblin bom Bombardment could be good later. I do have some spare bodies, you know, between the tokens from my commander, Bowmasters, etc. So. Not bad. So my opponent playing out that card turn one, it did delay me, but my opponent's on the mold of five, and I'm very happy with any resource exchange. That's just that's just what, you know, how magic works, basically, that when some one player is mulliganed, resource exchanges work well for the opponent. So so here is my opponent basically trying to make a choice about playing out um the commander. So, worth noting is my opponent went for a planes here. I think this is where I hedge a little bit. Wow, that's actually an incredible draw because I was just about to tell, talk to you about Blood Moon. Ah, <sighs> okay. So, what can I do here? I want to hedge against Blood Moon as much as possible. Um, so, I think that starts with Basic Forest. And then, let's see, Utopia Sprawl onto that one. Yeah, so let's go like this. So, Utopia Sprawl onto that one. Name Black. Wild Growth onto that one. And Develop Deathrite Shaman. So this way, I'm ready for Blood Moon, and I just have a land that's after... Uh, well, not Junt mana. <laughs> Double green and black here, I guess. But it's still going to be very useful. Deathrite Shaman currently has a couple of lands to, to turn into mana. Let's see here. Uh, I believe my opponent has a deal one. Yeah, okay. So my opponent not, is doing like a cool trick here. Activates, and then it's a deal one. That's cool. Okay, so now, which draws my opponent a card. So they're currently trying to get back into the game, which is a scary prospect. So let's see. Can I double spell here? I, I mean, I can, and I will. Um, 
think I should kill the channeler. Even though it's very tempting to go deal one damage, play bombardment, deal two more damage to kill it. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that because I have animate dead to, to hopefully do it all over again. So, bombardment. And then I'm going to ping it two more times. I think I hang on to the Besager, you never know. And then if I need it next turn, I can just play it. Let's see, four... Yeah, this is, this is good, this is good. I like this a lot. Because then if I draw Black Source, then I can double spell with Animate Dead and Slimefoot. If I don't, I think I just Animate Dead the Bowmasters to kill the Chandler. Oh, boy. Super cool play by the opponent here. Responding with Pyrokinesis. And my opponent is going to deal one damage to everything here to... Ah, uh, this is beautiful. This is sick. It looks like... Yeah! Ah, uh, that's, that's why you play Magic the Gathering. So you can cast Pyrokinesis and draw a million cards. Nice Goblin Bombardment. <laughs> Doesn't do anything here. Alright, could I have done anything smarter? Yes, if I play Goblin Bombardment first... That's the answer. Okay. So if I if I sequence correctly, I beat my opponent, but I didn't I didn't, so now I lose. That's uh, how magic should work as well. The devil's in the details. Yeah, play bombardment first, then shoot that guy for one, and then the two creatures are already in play. And my opponent can't, you know, I can fizzle those. Yeah, I just gave my opponent, like, I don't know, six cards or something. Like, six... A lot of resources. This guy stays in play, this guy draws a million. That's so strong. So now... I feel like this game is over, but let's see. Here's Fatal Push. Fatal Push kills the commander, but I'm not putting on any kind of pressure. Uh, Well, let's try and play that, see what happens. Uh, pass, I guess. My opponent is rolling with the initiative here. That was a good lesson. My opponent multi four got their mother runes killed, and I still lost handily because I didn't sequence correctly. Let's see. Bombardment first, then Bowmasters. Kill for one. Sack one of them. And then my opponent kind of has to make a move with Pyrokinesis, then I can... Hmm. Then maybe they, if they respond to the first ping, they actually still get to do it? Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I actually think my opponent was in good shape there. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, we can, we, can, we can move on to the next game here. That was cool. That was very, very cool. It's funny that I talked about Pyrokinesis early, and then I realized, oh, that was another deck, and then it turned out Pyrokinesis is also very strong in that deck, so yeah, perfect situation, much like this hand. This hand is awesome. I go turn one, Badlands, Ignoble, then I have a couple of removal spells. Actually, the weak, the weak point about this hand is if my opponent kills the higher turn one. If they don't, I think I'm just cruising, but, I, you know, I've called some less fortunate shots before, so... <laughs> I'm not gonna what do you what do you call it? I'm not gonna count my chickens before they hatch. I do have a bad card like Chaos Defiler in my hand. I don't think when I get to five mana I mean maybe this card will be fine, right? But it's I would much rather have a card that helps me get, you know, to the later stages of the game. So that's always the balance you have to walk. No 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 wait. I I think I just messed up. Yeah, I messed up. I was supposed to go turn one beside you. Ugh. Ho, 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 ho. Bad, bad player is bad. So now I have to go by you. Ah. Too much talking. Sorry about that. So a good player would have gone turn one beside you, play Noble, because that would hedge better against the opponent having a removal spell. Now if my opponent has a removal spell, not only can I not play my three, but I also only have two colors because... 
I decided to fetch turn one instead of just playing my... This is just a forest. Like, that's just how you should see the card. Forest. Ghost Vacuum. Okay, I'm not scared of that card. Funnily enough, that card would counter my Death Rite Shaman. It looks like we kind of um, prevailed for now. Because now I'm playing another card out that also, you know, is making mana. But yeah, that was just bad. It would be way better if I had Beseju and Badlands in play right now. Because now my opponent just pyrokinesis me and it's kind of the same thing, right? Or Fury. Those cards are legal. <laughs> so now... Okay, Magda's fine. Magda's a card that combos with the Vacuum. So I think I have to kill that card. Tap Treasure Token is quite solid. Um, yeah, let's see. What can I draw here? All the Fond and Chaos Defiler. I feel like I should just discard those two. Okay, draw into those cards. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, Fatal Push, that card, I guess. And then... Play Slimefoot. Yes, I understand. This is just a very good combo. And then I have Bombardiers for next turn. I have zero mana Snuff Out up. Skull Clamp. It's unclear if I need the Skull Clamp this game. It's obviously quite strong, right? So let's say the game comes to a stall or my opponent starts killing some of my stuff or whatever. But let's see. My opponent now has four mana to work with turn three, even though they're playing a non-green deck. Most mana acceleration, if not everything, is banned in this format. Uh, aside from, you know, green dorks, there's very few exceptions like... Um, let me think. Like uh, Springleaf Drum and stuff, and the blue one that's very similar. So let's see what this is. Uh, this is my opponent trying to kill a dork and draw a card. I think I want to snuff out in response here. So my opponent, sure, they killed off an ignoble, but I'm already off to the races here. Um, so it's not that dangerous. And obviously my opponent did not have Fury or... Um, pyrokinesis, they would have fired them off. So now let's see what I can do. I have five mana to work with. That's enough for Bombardiers and Skull Clan plus Equip. Uh, should probably take advantage of that combo. So let's see if I go mana, mana, mana. Let's see, I need some red here. Broadside Bombardiers. Play Skull Clamp. Uh, I guess we just attack here, then maybe equip the Reflection and deal five. I think that's reasonable. So how much is this attack for? It's for good old eight damage. So now Skull Claim is really going to do its thing here with Brom Bombardier. So let's equip onto Reflection. Let's sacrifice Reflection. Draw two. I guess I developed the Death Rite. Maybe it's not. Maybe, yeah, I guess it's a creature. So what can my opponent do here? Turns out nothing. Yeah, the, the opponent was too far behind here. So why did we win this game? I didn't do myself any favors with the fetching turn one, but um, once I got to play my Fable out, I kind of stabilized in the mana department, and from there it was kind of, come on now, zero mana removal, one mana removal. That's exactly what I wanted here. And, and then you just... This card is just solid. Like, 3-3 three, three, that keeps making 1-1s, one, you have to kill it. And if you do, you also have to worry about the graveyard. Of course, not this game because, because of Ghost Vacuum, but just in general, it's just... It's just so annoying to deal with this card because it will come back and it will like generate some kind of value and all the while I'm playing you know solid cards around it so pretty solid here I like it a lot um yeah let's play one more match and uh, yeah thanks for sticking with me so far.
Alrighty, welcome to round three. I'm playing S Slimefoot and Squee and Duel Commander, and uh, yeah, this I, mean, I really need to change this to Right Arbor. I thought it was a normal forest here again. Uh, this hand looks fine. I'm playing against what I would classify as Esper Control with a lot of Link synergies. That's why uh, that's what Animatu does basically. The whole like exile some stuff that has a cool ETB. Um, yeah, I mean this hand is probably okay. Um, I will say. Delighted Halfling could catch my opponent's two mana, two mana counter here, so that's what I'm hoping for. Opponents on a mulligan to six, and you can even argue so am I between you know Dryad Arbor, Moloch, Goblin Bombardment. Like this, this hand is not perfect, but let's see, let's see. Uh, let's just go Command Tower Halfling. So Halfling plays around two mana counters. If it gets killed, then my opponent is, you know, they need to kill this bird, basically. I'll say that. Let's see if they succeed in doing so. Having the, the Halfling into an uncounterable three job that you know about is huge because, for the opponent, information-wise, because now they're not speculating, hmm, is this uncounterable clause on the halfling going to be relevant? Like, we're playing dual commander, and I have a three-drop commander, so... Yes, it is going to be relevant. I think that's the realization that leads my opponent to... Not hold up counter magic. So, halfling has definitely done its job here. Unless I get... Fatal push or plowed here, then I'm going to be very sad. Pass the turn, bro! Pass the turn, bro! The bro passed the turn. Okay, so... I think I want to hang on to the Delta for, you know, surveil purposes. So Yavi Maya, green, black, red, uncounterable. Play good old Slamfoot and Squee. I will say that deck probably has a ton of sweepers in it. So Thoughtseize was a good draw, but it was also, you know, I can't slow down myself here. But it would be good if my opponent killed my halfling, then I could have gone Thoughtseize, Lanor Elves, and, you know, built on. I need to read this card. This card looks cool. Enters tap. Tomb Fortress. Simple name. I love it. Add black for five mana. Mill four and then reanimate. So pretty, pretty, pretty sweet for later. Mm. Let's see. Is there any mileage in going Thought Seas first? Know where I'm at? Uh... Thought sees first to know what I'm know where I'm at. I think that's reasonable. What if I get mana leak or the other one? The blue white mana leak. Probably don't want that, so play land first, even though it doesn't feel that great. Thought sees also very nice to know if there's a sweeper coming, etc. So playing around the mana leaks of the miscalx of the world. I still get counters. No, I don't get counterspelled. I'm actually playing around a bunch here, aside from, you know, Memory Lapse. I'm even playing around Reman and Reprieve, so... Pretty solid land drop there, I think. My opponent has a removal spell. No, I, just, I don't think my... I don't know if my opponent has a removal spell. I think they, they're holding up to... Oh, Force of Will. I don't even know what that card is. Lord of Change. Let's see. Flying... Wo Interest draw three. So, okay, so this is kind of reanimation. This is a great card to reanimate. When it enters draw three cards, Flying Ward three. This card is awesome. I love the Lord of Change. So that card gets forced. I, this just has Sweeper written all over it, doesn't it? I guess I am resolving a bombardment here as a small hedge. It's not really perfect, but it's fine against the control matchup. If I get leaked or whatever here, I can live with it. So now I attack for five. My opponent could have some kind of flash creature, sure, but it's fine. I have a bombardment that I played first main phase for partially that reason. And now I have to pass, and I expect to get either Damned, Wrathed, 
Supreme. And that is exactly what's going to happen here. So my opponent is going to dig for a sweeper and they have a land. So, I mean, we I'm not going to say we have our opponent on the ropes, but we definitely put on a lot of pressure here. Um, I guess while I wait here, I should check out my Zenith package. So let's see. Uh, dual Commander, Junt. Tarmogoyf is fine, I guess. If I hit an untapped land, I can go Grist. I think that's slightly better than Tarmogoyf. A darn Dryad Arbor. Okay, so... My opponent is showing off a lot of stuff here. It looks like Esper Reanimator, Astral Dragon, Dance of the Dead. A lot of classic cards here. Overlord. I like that card a lot. I think it's like you can, yeah, you can impend it for two mana. And you mill four. So it's like all the good enablers, you know, Entomb and Vampiric Tutor and stuff like that is banned. But you have like Unmarked Grave, Demonic Tutor. I love this. So, oh, Psychic Frog. Yeah, Psychic Frog must be amazing in this format. I need to find a deck where I can play it. Um, okay, so my opponent's Esper Reanimator, and I have a little bit of Graveyard Hate. Actually, I can go for the Keen, whatever, Curator, whatever it's called. Uh, uh, Keen-Eyed Curator, the Raccoon. <clears throat> Agent. So my opponent is, I don't know. How many sweepers can you actually run in your reanimator deck? Maybe it's just down to Toxic Deluge. So this would... <laughs> when you've played all the formats, like 60 card formats, you'd be like, wow, he exiled so many cards, but it's not really a big deal here. It is kind of cool to get info about my opponent's deck. Let's see, impending. So three mana. Mm, draw two, discard one. Okay, sure. My opponent's playing a lot of cool cards here. Tivit, six mana, six, six, flying ward. Enters or deal combat damage. Vote. Okay, some value stuff. And then you can do it twice because while voting, you vote an additional time. That's awesome. Ashen Rider, uh, this is this is cool. Like just imagine going through all of magic and you, you you're within the Esper colors, and then you find oh a new like you know modern all star faithful mending. Then you go to some Warhammer set and find Lord of Change. And then you go all the way back to Alpha. You find good old Animate Dead. Then you go to some random Commander expansion and find Pivot. Flash even. Oh, sick. I wonder how many cards Flash is actually good with in the format. Probably not that many. So now my opponent's down to 24 cards, which I don't think that's going to be relevant, but let's just imagine that my opponent only plays... They're not really a control deck, we just learned their reanimator deck, so... They don't have all of the Wraths in the world. Oh, I love that card. Metamorphosis Fanatic. Legacy Stable. My opponent's down to... <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of cards. Oh, I need to read this one. Hoarding Bro Broadlord. Eight mana. So, what happened? Oh, Balance. Balance is a great one here. So, I need to read this first. Eight mana. Convoke. Seven, six. When it enters, search a library for a card. Exile it face down. And then you can play it. Okay, that's super cool. Okay, so now I need to go boom. 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 Sacrifice to the command zone. Take four. Hmm, what should I discard? So funnily enough, my opponent both got to kill my creatures and make me discard. Maybe the Maw Lock is just terrible. We can we can discard Maw Lock. Oh, that's not how it works. I need to choose the one I keep. Okay, so keep those. Get the Maw Lock out of here. Under City Sewers. So I would guess in this spot the Keen Eyed Curator would be kind of good. So if I draw land, that's definitely what I'm going for on Earth. So I can unearth a 2-2 right now. If it's a, so funnily enough, if I already had on Earth, I could have um, gotten back that one, but that did not happen. 
Um, should I just get the curator in play here? I think that's what I'm leaning towards. So then my opponent kind of needs to either have a spot removal now, or to, you know, reanimate something now. And I think those are good questions for me to ask, or good, those are good demands to have here. Let's see. What are, we, what are we looking at here? Animatu, sure. My opponent does not have anything to favorably blink. And the draw draw one, put a card on top, that is less of a problem here because it's not putting any um, big creature into the graveyard. But it could set up some annoying miracle like Terminus or something. So will I have to worry about not overextending? I will say that. Um, also worth noting, if I attack my opponent for four, they're down to five, and then all of a sudden, Goblin Bombardment is very close to killing my opponent. Uh, so I have to think about that. Oh, by, oh, wait, 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 wait. If I can exile four different types, I have lethal. So, I have creature land. My opponent has instant sorcery. So, with Fatal Push being gone... I actually think I have lethal here. Between seven damage from the the raccoon juggling all the trash and goblin bombardment going to the face twice. So I'm I'm gonna go for that unless something changes. I wonder if my opponent plays Gorio's Vengeance in the deck. Shallow Grave is another one, but I don't know how strong the creatures generally are if they don't stick around. I guess that would be the that would be the explanation to that answer, uh, that question, rather. So, good old raccoon. Let's see. Don't do it, bro. Don't kill it. My opponent will totally blow me out if they kill the curator. Ooh. Shocking. Turn of events. So now, I think it's better for me to simply just attack the opponent than start pumping, because if I get my opponent to two, it's also lethal. So my, opponent, my opponent needs to kill the curator now, I feel like. They don't, so... What can we draw? Lelia is not bad, not bad. Should I play the Lelia? What if I play the Lelia? My opponent kills this. Yeah, I think it's good to play. Because now if my opponent counters it, I have lethal. If my opponent kills Curator, I still have lethal. My opponent needs two answers here. Uh, can I get away with not attacking with Arbor because I want graveyard interaction? Let's, th let's think. If I attack, my opponent has one answer. I still have lethal because I have one more creature than I did before. I think this is fine. Then if my opponent targets one of the creatures, I win with a bombardment. Here's my land drop. I think my opponent's dead, unless there's some removal spell that also gains life. No, but I can fizzle that with a bombardment. Okay, let's see. I feel like we're going to game two shortly. All right, so going to game two, what kind of graveyard hate do I have? I'm mainly just trying to see how much I actually have, because I don't think it's that much. I have Endurance, I forgot about that. The Curator with Zenith and Emperor, which is like, let's say my opponent goes, I don't know, Careful Study, then Emperor also counts, right? Death Threat Shaman also counts, so I have some, some stuff. It's not that bad, and then I have my Tutors. And I also have my own reanimation between um, reanimate and animate dead if my opponent leaves uh, an, an unattended creature in the graveyard. Missed the unmarked grave. Dot, dot, dot. That happens. All right. I mean, this is like super solid hand, 
and but in the context of playing against that deck, might not be that strong, right? So I don't think mulliganing is is gonna do me that much good. Let's see. Important. Important, important. On their own library, so no luxury. My opponent does not have the perfect hand. I guess that's just what we can say from that decision. Here's Spirit Guide, which is a cool one. I think I go Overgrown Tomb Finthorn. When you develop a green mana dork, it's quite important that you develop a multicolor land. Otherwise, you can't go turn two commander. Let's say I fetch basic forest here, and then, oh, no, I don't, then I don't have junk mana turn two. So it's like a minor thing to consider. So now I can choose between fetching Taiga and taking damage from Springs. I think fetching Taiga is going to work just fine. Then I'm going to go red, black, green. Smuggler's Copter was a decent draw. It also synergizes a bit more with the deck when I have the reanimation angle. But I think getting my clock up and running here is going to be first priority. Pretty cool here. Temporal Mastery getting. Spotted off Portent. Setting up the top here with a Miracle. Let's see if my opponent can sweep me here. That would be annoying. Could be another Surveil Land. Could be a one-drop cantrip here before my opponent takes the extra turn. Hmm. I'm... I'm... I'm re I, re I mean... Oh, yeah, the... Oof, that's beautiful. That, that's the dream. No matter if you play Modern, Legacy, or Dual Commander, when you when you spike our kind of cruelty off off of your surveil, it's uh it's a good day at the office, that's for sure. That card is uh not not terribly beatable. It looks like my opponent does not have reanimation currently, so I'm still there's still some kind of hope. But yeah, our kind of cruelty is amazing. Two more creatures getting thrown to the graveyard. If only I had Endurance. Can you imagine having Endurance here, blowing my opponent out? That would be crazy good. Let's see if they spike the reanimation spell. I just think it's so unlikely that my opponent does not have a Sweeper, does not have reanimation spell. But that's kind of my only hope. Sometimes in Magic, you need to, you need to identify when you can actually win, right? Uh, yeah, to go take a memory lapse. If my opponent has a land, that's kind of annoying. So, funnily enough, I can make an interesting play here and go upkeep lightning bolt to clear the blocker. I actually think I'm going to do that. And then if I get lapsed, I draw into it again. Just tiny, tiny play that is useful. Upkeep, kill the blocker. I don't think my opponent is too is too happy about uh, countering that, so they don't, I guess. Um, but now I get memory lapsed, more or less, no matter what I do. Um, I want to draw the Smuggler's Copter next turn. That's kind of the question I have to ask myself. Do I want to draw it again next turn? Maybe that's fine. Now I go Smuggler's Copter. I'm doing it before damage because I don't want days to be live. I want to actually just get the memory lapse out of here and attack for five. Trying to put, on the, put the pressure on the opponent here. Unclear if it works. I can just say my opponent is, hasn't had a reanimation spell yet, so... Come on now. One or two more turns with that, and, and I'm probably doing fine. Let's see what this is. Three mana. Good old Teferi. What are you gonna what are you gonna bounce? Are you gonna take yeah, gonna take time off of my hands here with that one? That's totally fine. No more two mana counter for you. Wonder what I should do here. There's something about the card balance that kind of worries me. So I feel like I want to go Fable and Copter. 
Let's play the copter my opponent already knows about. Am I attacking both creatures on Teferi, or do I simply not care? I'm not going to say I don't care, but I'm going to say I'm not going to prioritize attacking it with two. I think that's a bit too over the top uh, when it comes to respect. I already have green, green, and green, and more green, so maybe it's time for more black? I don't know. Three black also seems kind of unlikely that I'm going to need. So here, Fable... So now I'm hedging as much as I can against the Sweeper. I realize I don't think I can uh, even get pierced. I get spiked. Well, well, well. Spirit Guide. Spirit Guide it is. So now kill to fairy attack for one. Oh, days even. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so I guess I'm fine with that. Everything considered because that just means my opponent does not have, you know, as much digging power. And I'm still putting on a lot of pressure here. My opponent lost a bit of tempo, but they get a little bit of selection, I guess. I have enough power on the table to kill any Machu next turn if I want to. Also worth noting, my opponent did not return a Surveil Land, so my opponent might want to have five mana available this turn. So what could the reason for that be? Any Machu plus two mana counter, I guess? That's my best bet. Let's see. There's also We also saw some five mana creatures when browsing the exile uh, last turn, so I guess that's what we're going to see here. On Burl writes Archon. Darn, that's so strong. Um, sacrifice a Sapling. Discard. Hmm. The thing is, if I discard... Slimefoot and Squee. What if I discard Baragoyf? No, that's not strong. I think I do like this, and then... Do I leave it in the graveyard? I think that's pretty good. So, leave it in the yard. Let's see what we can draw here. Delighted Halfling is not ideal. So, what is that? Oh, so tough. So now I want to go Baragoyf. I want to go Halfling. And then I'm dying to two swings. Yeah, and Burl Rice was a good one. But also, very lucky that my opponent did not have reanimation for so many turns. Now they're going to reanimate something else. So yeah, okay, 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 fair enough. The flashback I, I briefly forgot about. Okay, let's go game three here. So... On the play, it's more likely I can aggro my opponent to death, and if I see a piece of graveyard hate, which I did in this game, I also think I'll be in good shape. So, eh, it's it's tough to play against the deck like that because you can't re you can only play you know incidental graveyard hate, and there's no sideboard. So, playing a deck definitely has has an advantage, you know, compared to in other formats where you can just have a sideboard against it. Mm, yeah, I mean, a fast hand, a piece of or a piece of graveyard hate that would be awesome. Um, yeah, let's just before my opponent comes back, let's just quickly get an overview about the interaction once more, so I'm more likely to remember it during the games. Eldritch Evolution and Zenith, those both count. Uh, what am I missing? The curator. I even reanimate would have been insane that game. Animate Dead would have been insane that game. Tainted Pact is another tutor I forgot. Uh, what else when it comes to Beaver Hate? Deathrite Shaman. So all of a sudden it's nine cards. Like, that's not bad. Nine cards is almost 10% of the deck. So, anything else? What does this do? Oh, Proliferate. I wonder when that is good. Some plus counters or counters on Planeswalkers, maybe? I don't know. Demonic Tutor as well. Recurring Nightmare, Chthonian Nightmares, only your own graveyard. Birthing Pot as well. Yep, 
equal to one plus yeah so you can you can't really you can't pod down so to speak so but i can pod a small creature into like a mana dork into a curator or a two drop into endurance um i don't have any lands that tamper with the graveyard sometimes these decks will not this deck but you know across the format will have lands that that interact with the graveyard but uh yeah let's see game three the marbles okay i mean this hand is not ideal at all but it has you know some upside with tainted pack is that good enough the thing is this hand does not even have even though i have the spirit guide it doesn't have black mana this is probably a mulligan well turn two lelia okay okay i talked myself into keeping because it turned two lelia but yeah this is definitely not ideal let me say that much. If my opponent just, you know, plows the Lelia, I could do nothing here. Meanwhile, my opponent's on the Molta 5, which is obviously an advantage for me, but you can argue I'm on a Molta 5, and I need help from the top of my deck just as much. So let's see. Stomping Ground. Pass. See if there's any cantrip action for my opponent. Important on their own library. So I have a couple of turns to find the black mana. Let's see if I get trolled by Lelia and I flip over. I flip over the black source with Lelia and I never see see another one. That would be funny. Card like Force of Will would be mildly annoying. Card like Days would be mildly annoying. Drawing Elvish Mystic now is mildly annoying. So let's play Lelia. Attack. Minsk and Boo. So now it's just a good surveil. I don't want to draw Minsk and Boo in this situation. So let's say my Lelia now gets killed. I'll have the Elvish Mystic and maybe we can play on from here. Let's see what this is. Oh, wow. Turn 2 Flash. Let's go, baby. This is sick. Turn 2 Flash Astral Dragon. So is that just two three threes? I'm saying just. Okay, okay. It's two three threes. Okay. So I actually thought it was better. But I will say it combos so well with the reanimation. Um, Direction Tower. Oh boy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hmm. I feel like I should play this out. But I'm not I'm not sure. I'm trying to think about what to do here. I draw anime dead, what the hell? <laughs> That's so strong. Um, so now I make an astral dragon, right? Out of the opponent's graveyard. Create two tokens that are copies of target non-creature permanent. Except they're three threes. <laughs> so funny. Um, so, well, let's think here. My opponent obviously wants the mana. That's why they played like this. I like that a lot. Um, what can I do? If I play the mana dork, I would just assume Lelia is better to keep around. If I play the mana dork, I then go for action tower from the mana dork. Um, okay. Then I can't double spell. But if I. Do it with the Lelia, I can animate dead my opponent's Astral Dragon. And Tainted Pact. But I would have to do that straight away, which is kind of annoying. I could also... I need to read this, because maybe I can... Okay, 
So I think I found the line. I think what I want to do is sack the Lelia to play Orcish Bowmasters. Then I'm gonna make two copies of that with the Astral Dragons to kill off an opponent's land. Let's see if this works. Let's see if I found a good line. Um, so Orcish Bowmasters shooting my opponent's land for one. Animate dead on my opponent's Astral Dragon. This is so funny. Don't get dazed, please. Okay, I don't get dazed. Now I'm gonna make... Oh, I can't target Bowmasters. It's so funny. <laughs> well, so what about... How does this work? If I go for animate dead? I'll try. I don't know how this works. <laughs> oh, this is so s incredibly stupid because... <laughs> Uh, I don't know if this works at all. And, and the other one dies, I guess. That's so bad. <laughs> ah, Astral Dragon doing Astral Dragon things, and I have read the card uh, so many times. I, I remember it comboed with Parallax Wave in, um, in Vintage Cube. It just took me such a long time to realize what's going on here. So now, <laughs> Oh, this is so incredibly bad. So, I, in this situation, I was supposed to do so many other things than what I did. Um, I was supposed to either... Oh, you own. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So, I was supposed to make my stomping ground... Like, it, I was supposed to ramp my mana here. Or, I was supposed to... Um, not play the Bowmasters. I was supposed to play, you know, like Tainted Pact and have something else for that mana. Or I was supposed to leave the Lely and play. Okay, so my opponent also did some interesting things here. But maybe that's good. Because now... Okay, okay, okay. This... <laughs> Okay, Astral Dragon doing Astral Dragon things here. What happens if you keep Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this'll 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 do the trick. Okay, okay. This was awesome. This was uh one of my favorite videos in a while, just doing stupid things all the time and uh getting getting crushed here. So funnily enough, it's not I'm not that far from Headline of Scarlet to be, you know, a game winning card here, but not quite the case. Can it be the case next turn? Let's see. 12 in the air. 15 in the air. 19 in the air. So I guess don't take... Don't take damage. My opponent has 19 in the air. Um, sacrifice. Green, red. Slime food. This is so funny. Ah, this is so funny. So many oversights, and I guess a, a, I guess a complicated card in Astral Dragon, but it's still incredibly funny. So how much damage do I have next turn? Let's say my opponent has nothing to interact with. Then I have four, five, six, seven, then I have ten damage. So I need my opponent to take two damage and not develop the board. Here's more Astral Dragon blinking. Also, just this, the, this card, you can blink anything your own. It's not you control, it's Exile Another Permanent you own, which is very interesting when it comes to reanimating my opponent's stuff. That's actually built-in redundancy, or built-in protection, rather. Intuition. <laughs> ah, this has been great. This has been great. Not exactly a winning endeavor, but a very entertaining endeavor. I'm going to remember this match for a while. Simply just getting clowned by Astral Dragon. Just imagine I had the big Alien play. I have two more mana to work with. I tainted packed it for something useful. Scarlet for unblockable. Kraken for lethal. It, I think if I, if I, if I knew everything, uh, like if I knew what I was doing, I would just, I would have won this game, but who knows.
So let's see what this is. Enters face down, so I can't allow that. And my opponent will reanimate here, so I guess I give my opponent the Elish Norn? Choose one. Yeah, sure. Go FUD, buddy. I got you right where I want you. Yeah, I, I think this format is awesome. Like, it's, it's just so much new stuff to learn. GG, sweet deck. Yeah, that was sick. Uh, that was awesome. All right, my opponent took me down here, Esper Reanimator. I, yeah, I didn't have a chance here, to be honest. Uh, and I didn't give myself a, a good chance either. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. I hope you guys liked um, what Dual Commander has to offer. I think I was pretty lucky to play against three pretty different decks, I would say. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed every minute of it. I hope you did as well. And uh, yeah, as I said, in a couple of days, I'll have my article up on mtgo.com about the format. Um, and I'll be doing commentary on Saturday with Will Hall in the MTGO Creator Showdown. So plenty of more Dual Commander to be played. And I hope that you will be here with me. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.